Welcome to Behind the Scenes with the Hanover Theater. This is Lisa Condit, and today I am speaking with Steve Landis. Steve plays John Lennon in the Experience the Beatles with Rain coming to the Hanover Theater March 1st through 3rd. Welcome, Steve. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing great. So I was reading a little bit about you, and I started laughing to myself almost immediately because it says that you taught yourself guitar at 10 listening to Beatles records, and... I grew up with two brothers who were complete Beatles freaks, and they also played the guitar. So I learned all the Beatles songs playing, well, I didn't play along with them, but singing along with them as they played the guitar. And the Beatles are just like that, aren't they? Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I I hear these kind of stories all the time. Uh, You know, I've lived it, you've lived it. Um, uh, The Beatles affect everybody in, in, in so many different ways, but it's always a positive and and uh, um, uh, the kind of force that, that brings people together. Right, and, you know, it says here that you, you've you been to England a few times. Want to tell us a little bit about your travels and doing some research for your role? Yeah, well, of course, being a <laughs> Beatles fan, I've become quite the Anglophile. I love all things British. Uh, my first trip over there, actually, I wound up uh, playing with Pete Best, who was the original Beatles drummer, just before they... Uh, uh, brought uh, Ringo into the band for their uh, recording deal. Um, so, I mean, he's been over there this whole time. He still lives there. Um, he opened up his uh, his club, uh, the Casbah Club, which the Beatles played. Um, and so I, I got to get up on stage and sing with him. It, it was just a surreal moment. I mean, there are too many uh, people on the face of the earth that can say they were the Beatles at one time, you know, and uh, he's one of them. Uh, so... Uh, to, to get to play on stage with him was really incredible. And, and just going over there all of the time, is uh, just it, it has that Beatles feel. There's, there's nothing like uh, Beatles there. Um, and, in fact, uh, our sister show, Let It Be, is now on the West End. So cool. uh, it, it, it's come full circle. It's, it's really incredible. Totally. And it says here that you have performed with other big 60s stars, too. What's that been like? Yeah, before I uh, got into Rain, I was uh, uh, doing a few different things, my own music, which I still do, and uh, some acting. And uh, one of the things I did, I worked in a show that uh, rotated uh, uh, some of the 60s artists. So I backed them up, people like Herman from Herman's Hermits, Peter Noon, uh, Tiny Tim uh, when he was still around with us, um, Mitch Ryder from uh, the Detroit Wheels, uh, Joey Mullen from the uh, Bad Finger uh, uh, band uh, that uh, the Beatles actually uh, were a part of uh, putting together. Uh, so, uh, you know, through, through uh, uh, working with them and, and uh, seeing, uh, seeing what, uh, what they do on stage, I learned a lot. And also, it, you know, it turns out a lot of these guys knew the Beatles. So I got to hear some of these great stories uh, uh, firsthand from the people that lived it. As a Beatles fan, that that's something that doesn't happen every day. I mean, I've got hundreds of Beatles books and DVDs, but to hear some of these stories, you know, some stories that <laughs> couldn't be published, <laughs> and other just you know to hear them, you know, right from the horse's mouth per se, um, is is just uh, you know I, I've been really blessed doing this for a living. So, is there anything you can share um, about? The character you played, John Lennon, anything that you heard that you hadn't seen published before that maybe surprised you or shed new light um, on what it was like? Um, I, I think, the, you know, what, what the main thing that I get um, from hearing a lot of people that knew him uh, tell me about him is he was just a really down-to-earth guy. I mean, um, there's so many... Uh, 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 characteristics to him. He changed a lot through his uh, short lifetime. He really packed, uh, you know, 80 years into his mm. 40. Um, and, and he learned a lot. I mean, when he was growing up in Liverpool, he had to um, a, a, a adopt this uh, a kind of hard shell, you know, exterior. Um, you know, the, the gruff teddy boy uh, kind of persona was popular in the 50s, the leather jacket and the slicked up hair. And, uh, you know, he took that on, but he was still just this, you know, hurt little kid inside. And uh, he carried that with him. And I, I think that's why he wrote so many beautiful mm. songs. Um, even though he was the, the rock and roll guy, you think of, uh, you know, harder songs like Revolution and, 
and uh, Twist and Shout, uh, you know, which he sang incredibly, uh, uh, mm. covered uh, with the Beatles in uh, 63. And um, yet inside was this little kid that, that, that uh, you know, lost his mom, had so many losses in his life. And um, he, he, really, uh, he, he really became a, a beautiful poet and, and songwriter because of it. And of course, as, as, uh, uh, as he found fame with the Beatles, I think he really saw through that and wanted to find the truth in life. And, uh, you know, fortunately, like a lot of 60s people, uh, dabbled in drugs for a little while, but uh, even saw through that eventually. And, um, you know, by the, by the end of his life with Yoko and, and uh, uh, moving towards, you know, talking about peace and bringing people together, he really uh, became a, a, a wise old man at 40. It was incredible. And it's just sad to, to see what happened, and we can only wonder what uh, he would have been like at this point. Oh, for sure. For sure. Now, just so that our listeners have a little bit more perspective, you were recently nominated for a BroadwayWorld.com award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical for your performance in Rain, and Rain won the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Review. So what do you think really differentiates this production, Experience the Beatles with Rain, from a lot of the other Beatles types of tributes, just in your own words? Uh, the show, as as it is now, um, features a lot of production values that uh, you wouldn't see elsewhere. Uh, large uh, screens that uh, show um, our own original footage, uh, things like uh, video montages, your typical MTV type music video that that um, uh, uh, evokes the uh, feel of the '60s and the Beatles. To play along with uh, uh, some of the different songs. Um, other times there is uh, uh, actual uh, newsreel footage from the 60s to put mm-hmm. it all into perspective, what uh, the 60s meant to the Beatles and vice versa. Everything from Kennedy and uh, Vietnam War, uh, Martin Luther King, all of the things that were pertinent at that time. And um, also there's uh, uh, set pieces. We uh, play out the Beatles' career chronologically. And uh, we hit every high mark from the Ed Sullivan appearance, the Shea Stadium, the uh, Sgt. Pepper and Al- Abbey Road album covers come to life on stage. So there's a lot of sets and costumes and your typical uh, theatrical uh, uh, sort of thing to make you really feel that you're in that moment. Um, so it really is a, a theatrical uh, uh, a sort of uh, evening. Well, I was just going to say, I have seen some of the clips, and of course people can look on our website at thehanovertheater.org and see some of the previews, what you're talking about as far as the large montages and some of the multimedia. And I think that adds so much to this experience, to the show. And like you said, high production values, lots of great costume changes. Just out of curiosity, what are some of your favorite parts of this show or The Beatles? Oh, I love the uh, early era of the Beatles, mm. 1963 and 1964, the year before they came to America, and that year they uh, um, you changed the world. Uh, there's some sort of youthful energy that, uh, you know, their, their, their idea that, you know, they were just going to take over the world, and then I, I don't think they really <laughs> believed it when it happened, you know. Uh, and so, to, so to see those, those wide-eyed kids, you know, in, in the middle of this... Uh, uh, Hurricane, you know, the eye of the hurricane type of thing. It's just incredible to see. And, and the music, of course, is uh, filled with such energy. Um, I, it, it's infectious, you know, and I, I still love that stuff. Right. So tell us a little bit about some of the other people that are in the production with you. Well, uh, Joey Curatolo uh, plays Paul. Joe Bithorn plays uh, George. Uh, Ralph Castelli plays Ringo. Um, they're all the uh, original members of Rain, uh, along with me, and uh, we're the we're the guys who uh, put this show together over the course of uh, many many years. I mean, the band has been around since '75. Those guys have been in it since the uh, '80s, and um, we started out as just a, a, a tribute band, just like anybody else. I mean, Rain was uh, the first, and uh, we all came from uh, this show called Broadway. Uh, uh, this is a show called uh, Beatlemania mm. we were all a part of uh, that was on Broadway and uh, went traveled around the world. So 
we had in the back of our mind this this whole uh, Broadway type thing and putting a production show together that was uh, based on the Beatles. So uh, we slowly went from tribute band and paying our dues, playing everywhere, to finally uh, making it into the theaters and uh, putting together this show and then uh, hitting Broadway. How fun is that? Well, now, now uh, Lisa, I just want to say, I don't know if all of those guys are going to be there, so I don't know if that's uh, important or not, but I just thought I'd mention that to you. No, that's okay. Tell me what it's like to travel with your fellow bandmates. Do you ever sometimes feel like you really are kind of like the Beatles or... Just when you're on stage. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you're, you're acting on stage. I mean, we're primarily musicians, but you're acting. So, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where you don't really want to take it uh, off stage. You don't want to be that, uh, that crazy kind of, um, <laughs> you know, on 24-7 kind of thing. But, I mean, we have been in the middle of these uh, kind of Beatlemania moments. That, that make you feel like, wow, it's just uh, surreal. I mean, we've, we've had the fortune of playing um, on some of the same stages as them, from, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Circus Krone in Germany, uh, the arena they played uh, during their 66 tour, Olympia Theater, famous theater in Paris, France. Um, our sister show, Let It Be, uh, when it premiered on the, the West End, played at the Prince of Wales Theater, where the Beatles played for the uh, Queen Mother at the Royal Variety Performance. It's where the famous line that John Lennon said came from, uh, you know, for our next number, we'd like to ask your help with the people in the cheapest seats, clap your hands, and the rest of you, if you just rattle your jewelry. So, <laughs> when I did our, our West End show, I stood on the same stage and on the same spot where John Lennon said that line, and I, I, I recited that line. So it's just one of those moments where, you know, as, as a Beatles fan, to get to stand in their footsteps, it's really a, a once-in-a-lifetime uh, dream come true. Truly, what a rush, right? Yeah. So anything that you want to tell people who are listening who don't really know what to expect, what they should be thinking about as far as this show? Um, I think the best thing about our show is it's very audience interactive. It's not the kind of thing where you're just going to sit there and witness it. You're a part of the show. Um, as, as musicians, of course, we feed off our audience. If you have a good time, we have a good time, uh, and it's reciprocal. But um, also there, there are the sorts of things where um, we've got live cameras that uh, not only show us on the big screen, um, but they're directed back to the audience. So if you're having a good time, if you're up, if you're dancing, if you're singing along, if you're waving your hands, you might just make it on the big screen, too. And it's fun. It, it, it helps to really um, drive home the point that, you know, we're Beatles fans. Our audience are Beatles fans. The show is about celebrating the Beatles. So it's all just one big party. And if it's the sort of thing where um, you're just a casual Beatles fan, if you only know a few of the songs, you're still going to enjoy the show because it's a learning experience. I think you're going to hear some Beatles songs that you forgot about. You know, you might not have remembered uh, that uh, you love that song. And you hear it again, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love that song. It's been forever since I heard it. Maybe I didn't even re- remember that it was a Beatles song. Well, um, they were there's so... There's for everybody in this show. Right, and they were so prolific. I mean, seriously, I don't even know how many songs they produced and sang and recorded and all the rest. How many, out of curiosity, are in this show? Um, we've got to two and a half hours worth of uh, worth of music, wow. and uh, you're right. It, it's the sort of thing where they were only uh, uh, together as a recording group for eight years, and yet they packed over uh, 200 songs in their uh, catalog. And um, the, the great thing about it is they're all great songs. I mean, most of them are hits, and even the album cuts are are mm. um, you know iconic songs that we all know. They're ingrained in our in our in our memories and our minds um so it's the sort of thing where you're going to hear hit after hit after hit every song is, is a classic oh and, i can't and wait we, and we put them all live it's all performed live on stage you've got the four beatles up front and a keyboard player in the back that plays all of the horn parts the string parts everything that the beatles themselves didn't play he plays and that way we keep things live Nothing is pre-recorded. Um, there, there's a, a feel that you get when it's a live band playing for an audience that appreciates it. 
that you'll never get otherwise. Totally. Totally. We cannot wait. I will be there opening night. That's March 1st, and you guys are playing through the 3rd, which is a Sunday. Again, you can get your tickets at thehanovertheater.org. You can preview the show. And I just want to thank you so much for, St- for to Steve for joining us, and we will see you at the theater. Thank you, Lisa. That was really cool.